Hello, I'm Rick Lewis with Phenon Hoop Report. On today's Coach's Corner, I have Mike King of Charlotte Catholic. Welcome, Coach. Uh, hey, Rick. How are you? Thanks for, thanks for having me. Well, Coach, I'm glad to have you on board today because um, I told you earlier, I said I've done the Coach's Corner with um, other coaches, and I had at least three coaches reach out and say, Rick, you have to do an interview with Mike King. <laughs> well, that's, that's humbling because you've had, uh, you've had some – quite the coaches on. So I, uh, uh, I hope I, I do it justice. I'm sure you will. Let's go back to your playing days in high school because you're from Watauga County. Um, you played for Hall of Fame coach Mark Payne in Watauga up in Boone, North Carolina. What lessons did you learn from him as a player that you can apply to your coaching today? Well, I, I've been fortunate to play for – for several good coaches. And uh, when I was growing up, I grew up my, 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 with a single mom. So my coaches took, took my uh, kind of the, the fatherly role for me a little bit. And um, Coach Payne was, was probably the most, most influential of those coaches. Uh, well, believe it or not, we probably coach. I have a very similar style to his. But I also had – uh, Jerry Snow, who was my AAU coach uh, all through high school and even middle school, and then uh, later on in college with Dale Lair and Bart Lundy. But Coach Payne, you know, those years in high school are very, very uh, instrumental, I think, for, for young kids, young men. And he, he, his passion uh, that he had for the game back then, he lived in, in Ash County. It was a county away from where we were. And we practiced at seven thirty in the morning on a Saturday after a Friday game, and, and he was he was always in there before all of us. Never seemed to be in a hurry. Practice stuff was all set up. Everything was ready to go. Um, he was well known for his intensity, uh, but what I remember the most was his his ability to teach the game, um, his ability to. Uh, for, to, to teach you not just how to put the ball in the basket, but why were you doing certain things on the court. Uh, and, and I still think about those things today. I still teach our kids, uh, you know, you feed the post as a general rule, not in all cases, but I always tell them to float a little bit to where the back of their head moves. And that's something I learned from Coach Payne uh, almost, uh, almost 30 years ago now. And, and his, he was always prepared, very – very organized, and, and that, those are the things that I got from him. Um, and we still keep up with with each other to this day. I talk to him probably once a month, just seeing how things are going, seeing how his family's doing, uh, seeing how his kids are doing. Well, you were a pretty good player back in high school, and you graduated in 1995. You had an opportunity to go play at Queens University, a D2 school in Charlotte. Talk about your experience as a collegiate player. Well, the, my time at Queens – has really shaped at the the rest of where I am. It it, it really uh, dictated a lot of things for me. Um, I got to play for Coach Layer, Coach Dale Layer, um, uh, for three years, and then Coach Lundy for one. Uh, and the styles of coaching from Coach Payne to Coach Layer were very very different. Uh, both of them were very very good, uh, but Coach Layer was a little bit more cerebral. Um, thought about things a little bit more. He had a psychology degree and he used it to the, to, to the best he could. Um, but, but it was also very eye opening because, you know, every high school kid thinks, Hey man, I'm, I was the best player on my team. I'm going to go into this college. I'm going to be the best player on the college team. And that, that wasn't it at, it at all. I was very fortunate that uh, I made it through the preseason and, and early parts of the season uh, healthy because a lot of our team got injured. And myself and another freshman guard ended up being the sixth and the seventh men on the team. We only put, went seven deep. Um, I'm sorry, seven and a half. We had a kid, uh, another guy on our team who was uh, coming off of an ACL injury. So we always, all of our teammates always said we were seven and a half deep because he wasn't 100%. Um, but it was very eye-opening. I, I played 10, maybe 12 minutes on that, that team. Um, and we were very good. We went to the to NCAA Division II tournament three out of four years. There were all, there were all Americans on that team. But the, it was just very, very eye-opening about how much harder you have to work at each level that you progress. And, I, you know, I've try, I try to use that uh, here with just our eighth graders that come into JV or our JV kids that are trying to come up to the varsity level. You, you can't uh, – I use the word, the, the phrase, you can't have a, 
a JV work ethic if you want to play varsity. And uh, I, I just think it's very important to instill in these kids the hard work that it takes and the achievement uh, that it that it really is if you're asked to play on the next level. It's it's very very hard and it's uh, it's it's something you should be proud of. But but it's difficult to achieve. Well, Queens University, they're really a D1 school disguised as a D2 school. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. Very good. The talent level at Queens University, and Bart Lundy has done an amazing job over there, but it's a beautiful campus. The facilities are immaculate. And you know what? They're one of the best teams around. And if they were playing in a lower tier Division One, they would probably be one of the better teams there too. I, I agree totally. Co Coach Lundy, this is uh, his second time through. I, I was part of his very first team, very, very first team. Um, and uh, so he got uh, to cut his teeth coaching me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but he has, he has done a fantastic job. I, I'm proud to, uh, to have a little bit of a, a piece of that history and, and coach and I, we still stay in contact. I work his, his, uh, his camps. He, he, uh, my son goes to his camps in the, in the summertime. Um, but it's, it, it, it's something you can smile about as an uh, alumni of Queens to know how well he's doing there now. Well, the next time I talk to um, coach Lundy, I'm going to say, I talked to Mike King and you made him who he is today as a coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may have helped him a little bit with his, uh, his approach to discipline. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Well, after you graduated in 2003, you became an assistant coach at Charlotte um, Catholic. How did your playing experience, being a very successful player at the high school and also the collegiate level, pave the way for who you are as a coach today? Well, like I say, the I think Coach Layer uh, and Coach Payne ha have a lot to do with the way that I coach now. Um, my sideline demeanor is probably more along the lines of Coach Payne. Um, you know whether we're going really well or we're doing really bad uh, on that court based off of how, how my demeanor is. But my approach to the, the scouting, my approach to uh, talking to the kids off the court, uh, I, I think has a lot to do with Coach Layer. So the, the, both of those guys had a lot to do with the way that I coach and, and how I got there. But Queens really – my, my best friend at Queens uh, was Chuck Whitman, and, and he went to Charlotte Catholic. I, I didn't even know what, where Charlotte Catholic was when I came down here. Um, but then, my, like I said, Chuck became my best friend, and at the time he, he was the all-time leading scorer here at Charlotte Catholic. Um, and and his, his best friend from Charlotte Catholic um, was the principal's son here at Charlotte Catholic. So that's where the connection started way back, shoot, over 20, maybe 25 years ago now. Um, and I, in our just random small talk conversations with the principal at that time, I said, you know, I'd love to be a basketball coach. I just think it'd be a great thing to be at a high school, be a high school basketball coach, teach and coach for, I don't know, 20, 30 years if they'll let me do it. Um, and lo and behold, when the position came up, um, the, the principal hired a new, new head coach, um, Bob Moran and, uh, before I got a call from Bob, I had a call from Mr. Healy, uh, the principal at the time, saying, I, I want you to be our uh, assistant coach. Um, I just hired a new head coach. You guys be great together. And um, long story short, there, there was. That, that was a start to my career, 2003. I became the assistant here. Um, and uh, from there, we just, you know, you just live and you learn and you do what you can. And, and that's – that's really, I mean, it wasn't uh, earth shattering, but all of those experiences end up where, help me, helping me to be where I am today. If I didn't go to Queens, there's no telling uh, if I'd be here at this at Charlotte Catholic. Coach, how often do you go out and scrimmage with the players and show them you still have game? Back when I first started, I, I played a lot. Coach Moran, uh, he, he loved it. Uh, Coach Moran was an old Belmont Abbey grad, uh, played for Coach Hussey. And uh, we, we would – every now and then he'd put me in there to play because back then we had a lot more football players too that would play. So early in the season I would definitely uh, have to play because some of those guys would be on the football field. Um, the, the intensity would go up because they wanted to show coach. I was only 25 or 26 at the time. 
Um, and, and I would jump in there and funny, funny story where I realized it might be getting over my head was, uh, there, there was a player of ours. His name was Taylor Jacobson, about six, seven, had a wingspan of, oh my gosh, his arms just seemed like they would go forever. Um, he, he actually, believe it or not, he, uh, walked on one year at LSU. He was a really good player, but he was way bigger than I was. I'd step in on all sorts of positions. So here I am. I'm, I got, I got to play the five guys. I'll, I'll run it. I'll do it. So I go to box out Taylor and, you know, I got to do everything perfect because you're the coach and they're watching and I box him out and it's just a few, it's may, might be the best box out I ever had. And Taylor, cause he's six, seven has a wingspan of about seven feet. <laughs> he just literally just reached right over the top of me. I, I, I jumped and everything to go get it. And, and Taylor snatched it out of the air and, and had a little put back and, and, and we started laughing about it because I, here I am. I thought I had everything done right. And it just didn't, it didn't work, <laughs> but uh, I used to play a lot. I don't play now. I don't play now. I get the student faculty game, and that's about all they get to see of me. Well, in 2008, Coach, you became the head coach at Charlotte Catholic. Um, you have coached there for 12 years now, and during your um, duration, you've gone 219 wins, and you've only lost 111 games. But the highlight came in 2016 when you won the state championship Talk about your experience going from the assistant coach and going to being the head coach and also talk about the year that you won the state championship. Well, fortunate for me, uh, Coach Moran, who I was the assistant with, he, he allowed me to be very, very vocal on what we should do. He, he allowed me a ton of input. Um, and uh, some of the things we used and some we didn't. So the, the, the guys on the team when he decided to step away had been hearing my voice as uh, kind of from a, a head coaching standpoint, really. I mean, I had a lot to do. I, he let me take over huddles. Um, he let me give pre and post game talks. So I, I was very involved uh, with that. So when, <clears throat> when he stepped down, uh, he told all of the guys at the little, our end of the year party, and there was a young man uh, on, on our team, Pat Harrington was his name, and, and he taps me on the shoulder about 20 minutes after Coach had announced it, and he said, Coach, just so you know, they don't name you the coach, then I'm not playing next year. So the, I say that just as a, an example of how the guys already kind of believed in what I was doing. And we had nine seniors coming back. So it, it was a fantastic transition time. Bob, Coach Moran did a great job of really thinking about setting me up for success. <clears throat> um, and that year, actually, we got we hit a, a, a hot streak in the playoffs and, and ended up winning the sectional championship in my first year. And I think I'm, I think I'm John Wooden out here, right? I, I, I don't even know barely what I'm doing, and I'm getting lucky and winning games. Um, you know, and then fast forward to, to 2015-16, and, and that was – gosh, that was just – magical really I mean it was an unbelievable run um you know picture behind me here is of, a, of our guys right after the game it, it was just uh, that year you know you, you have to have good players uh, you have to have good players on the court and good players off the court you have to be lucky as well and, and we got lucky in a couple of cases especially in the playoffs um but that group was a special group uh, it's a group that on March the 12th every year I send a text and uh, I always get a text back from everybody else, from all of them on there, because it was just that that special of a team. Guys really, really pulled for one another. Um, we were deep, uh, and they played their rear end off for us, and it was a special, special year, something you don't – you'll you, you never forget as a coach, ever. Well, it sounds like you built a trust relationship early on as a head coach at Charlotte Catholic. But going back to 2016 when you won the state championship, you went 32-1. and won. The only loss came to Audrey Kale, and, and Mike Kraft just, I guess, just ruined it for you, Coach. You could have had a perfect season. Uh, well, he did ruin the chance of a perfect season, but if you asked the guys on that team, uh, it was a wake-up call. We, we had won, I think we were, tw I believe we were 22 and 0, uh, uh, 22 and 0, maybe 21 and 0 uh, when we played them. Um, and – so we, we end up losing that game, and, and the guy said, you know, we sat in the locker room after you left, Coach, and we told everybody, well, that's not going to happen again. We're not going to lose a single game the rest of the year. And ultimately that, that came true. 
Um, but I remember that play very, very well. Um, Wes Morgan, uh, who, who was a very good player, uh, could shoot the lights out of it. He didn't have a very good game in the first time we had played, which was a two-point game, I believe, as well. Um, he hit seven threes in that game. And it was their ball uh, with uh, 12 seconds or so to go on the clock. And, I mean, I knew they were going to run something for him. He was going to be involved in it. And they just ran a very simple uh, uh, screen away, triple screen away, and have Wes coming off of it. But I knew Kraft would have something up his sleeve. And I told the guy guarding the final screener, I said, listen, you, you can't help too much. If you show too much on that screen and get out in the passing lane too much, that guy's going to slip and he's going to get it out of the basket. So lo and behold, what happened? He showed too much on the screen. Kid slipped the screen and a layup uh, to put him up too. But the worst part was as uh, about seven seconds on the clock is when the ball went through. Um, <clears throat> one, of the, one of our guys, because it was a layup, he just took off down the other end. Um, and, and, of course, I screwed it up and, and called a timeout. And uh, as the ball's in midair, uh, and it's going that deep for what would have been a game tying layup at the other end. Um, so I learned a little bit from that game. But Coach Kraft, he's he's uh, he's tough to to have to go against in a late uh, a late game situation like that. Well, you know, Coach Kraft was one of the coaches that said you need to you need to interview Mike King. Now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach Coach Kraft, uh, believe it or not, um, he he actually recruited me. Uh, when I was in high school, he he had been at App State, um, and then he went and took his uh, position at uh, Wingate College. So he knew a little bit about me from our team camps, and he recruited me. And I always tell him it's, it's always a little, little something extra to to beat him because he he have ultimately went with a, uh, a guard, really good guard out of New York, uh, instead of me. So I always hold him a, a little bit, uh, a little bit of pressure there in that our, our games versus him. Well, Coach, the teams at Charlotte Catholic and your teams that you coach have a reputation for how hard they play and a strong desire to win. Talk about that. Well, Rick, I, when I first started, that's all I knew, just play very hard. Um, that's how I played. If you went and talked to Coach Payne, you went and got, talked to Coach Lundy, Coach Lair, um, that's what they would say that, that I brought was my intensity. Um, so – you know, when I talked a lot to those coaches, they said, just, you need to just be you. Okay. Just, just don't try to be anything different. Um, just be you and, and everybody, everything else kind of comes into play. So that's how I coached and that's what I expected from the, the players. But it's funny because in my early years, when we weren't very good, we, we were trying to be competitive. We were trying to take those steps. Uh, the coaches and, and everybody would tell me after games, man, we, we'd lose by eight or 10. And they say, man, you guys played so hard. It was, oh, that was great. And, and I, Rick, I took it as a, almost like a slap in the face at first because it was as if we weren't good enough to beat you, but we played really hard to, mm -hmm. to make it that close. Um, so it, it bothered me a little bit at first. Um, and over the years, as, as I hear it more and more, and I hear it more as in my, my ears as a, as a true compliment, I, I just, it, it's just come to be expected. Um, I have parents who were coming up, uh, their kids are coming up into ninth grade. Coach, what, what do we need to do? How, you know, I, I really want to make sure my son's successful and all that. And, and I'll tell them, uh, if they do not play uh, hard, they, they're not going to have any chance. And, and it's, it's, it's just an expectation from, from those kids from a very, very early age. Um, and it's, it's one thing that the, the players expect. Um, but at the same time, I, I feel as though I'm not asking them to play any harder than I am coaching for them. Um, right. That, I, in my opinion, I think is, is very, very uh, key. Um, I, I don't do the, uh, you know, if I'm going to ask you to get after it and be playing as hard as I, as I do, then you better believe that I'm going to be on the sideline doing the same exact thing. And, and I do that for the best player to the last player. Um, I'll routinely, if we're in a game where I've got the, the end of the bench players in and I don't think they're doing what they're supposed to, they're supposed to do from an effort standpoint, I'll, I'll call timeout and, and tell them that they're not doing what they need to. And, and, and not to embarrass them, but I want them to know that I expect the same thing out of them 
as I do out of the first five guys who are in the game. Um, I, I just think that's important from a program um, that everybody – it's all – the effort level is expected from everyone at that case. And that's one thing that's very important. If, if young players want to be recruited at the highest level and play collegiately, you know, you know, playing hard is now a skill because you not all players are playing hard. I mean, and the one thing, and I'm sure you talk to college coaches, they're asking you about their work ethic. Uh, how hard do they play? I, I had uh, just a quick story about that, and it really changed my whole approach to it, really. Um, I had a player a few years ago who, who went on to be very successful at, uh, you know, at a Division I school. But uh, we had some guys, some coaches that came down to watch us play um, leading into his senior year. And uh, Matt McKillop, who went to school here at Charlotte Catholic, and he's the assistant coach there at uh, Davidson, he came down and was watching him. So after a few, you know, 20, 30 minutes, a couple of games have been played, I said, Matt, what do you think? Matt said, he's, uh, he's got some size and he can really score the basketball. And, you know, I think I said, but he goes, he can't play for us, coach. I said, well, why, why not, Matt? I was a little surprised, that, you know, because he let in with all the good stuff. And he said, coach, he said, I'm, I've been watching a couple of games here and, and he doesn't even make it across half court every time. And I thought to myself, wow. I was like, that's the first thing that a school uh, of that level is looking for. And this poor kid um, is, is, may lose out on an opportunity to go to a place like that simply because he wasn't willing to cross half court and, and play hard enough that day. And um, that has – I'll never forget that. I tell all of our kids who want to be recruited that that better be the first thing you, you do um, it, when, it, when, when those guys are in the gym because, again, that guy may have lost his opportunity to play from now. He, it worked out great. Um, went to a great school, scored a thousand points, uh, but uh, you know who who knows what would have happened. Well, I often tell players at camps and at tournaments that we host. I said, you know what? If a college coach is recruiting you, you're on stage. It's like going to a play, and they're going to watch every single move that you make on the court. So you better make sure that you're given a hundred percent effort, a hundred percent of the time. Now, Coach, at Charlotte Catholic, you're in a unique situation because you're in the NCHSAA. What is the overall mission statement for Charlotte Catholic in the overall vision? Well, we, we, we are in a very unique situation. There's only a couple schools uh, for us, uh, like us, that they get to participate uh, with the NCHSAA. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the mission statement – um, that, that the school has is it's one that I feel is based around uh, community. Um, yes, we, we have, we are faith based and it's, you know, Roman Catholic faith, but it's a, it's an educational community. And, and to me, um, how I use that and to, to benefit our, our players um, is basketball is just a simple part of the educational process. Um, as a coach, uh, all, all the coaches who, who are, who are going to see this and who have been on there on with you, um, they, they, everyone understands this if you're a coach. During your season, you're going to spend so much more time with that student athlete than mom and dad are going to see them. Uh, you, you're going to have them dedicated, a dedicated hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours of your time in front of the, the, those players are going to be right in front of you. So, I believe it, this it, to tie this into our mission is is basketball is a, a piece of that educational community where the teachers are involved, the parents are involved. Here you have the uh, the, the Catholic faith that is involved, um, but it's all in hopes to help these guys become um, good young men and ultimately even better uh, as they move on, and just a foundation for them. Um, and, and that's something as, as coaches and, and as our staff that we talk about is, is from, let's not just teach them how to set a screen or how to come off and do a particular move or run a particular play or defense. We also have to make sure that when they're in the locker room, um, something as simple as when they leave, don't, don't, don't leave their water bottles and don't leave that stuff laying around. Um, look people in the eye as you're coming through the, 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 the handshake lines, which 
may may or may not happen anymore. But make sure you have a good handshake. And you look kids in the eye, whether you like that person or not, they just you got to respect what they just did on the court. So it's all a it's all a big process that we just have a we're fortunate enough to be a piece of. And that's where uh, I, I feel basketball is important in, in our particular school um, because um, it, it all adds up into hopefully creating a, a, a good individual that's uh, productive in society. Well, Charlotte Catholic is really well known for its academics and also for its faith-based education. What's some of the expectations and also the challenges the student athletes have at, at a school like Charlotte Catholic? Well, I'm not sure that those are some of the things that they, they're asked to do are much different from, from other schools, at least from the, the education standpoint. One slight difference might be we, we have seven classes here at Charlotte Catholic um, in our typical day. Um, so they're in the classroom the same amount, but they see seven teachers, and, and that's seven teachers who believe that their subject is the most important. So when they come home from practice, they may have – they may have seven teachers that all gave them, you know, a homework uh, or quizzes or whatever they have to prepare for. Instead of if you're in a block schedule, you, you have three or four uh, that, that could do that. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different, but there's no, uh, hey, <clears throat> you're on, you, you played Piedmont last night and it's an hour and 15 minutes away from, from that young man's home, got home at 11. You, you just, you know, I, I, tell them you, you have to be prepared for it. You have to be mature. That's part of becoming a, a varsity athlete is understanding the obligations and the time commitment that it takes uh, to, to do that and to, and to be successful. Um, so, that, you know, I, I don't think that any other school necessarily doesn't do that. There, there are a few things that, that are uh, required. You know, we, we have to, we attend mass. Um, there's a monthly mass that we have. Um, sometimes there's just classes as well, um, but there, you know, there's things that we do. That the challenges that the the that we have here at Charlotte Catholic, believe it or not, is that from a sports standpoint, is space. Um, our gym is uh, our gym is the auditorium. Uh, our gym is the church. Our gym is the gym. Um, our gym is where we would have. I mean it. Uh, we leave practice here about nine o'clock every night and we actually uh, split for 15 minutes with other teams uh, in order to get out of here at that time. Um, so, but it's a great place. This is a fantastic spot. Um, the sense of community is unbelievable in my opinion. Now coach, you've won four conference championships. You've won three sectionals. You've won a regionals and you also won a state championship. You've won coach of the year honors. What are some of your, basically your foundations for success? Well, I think I, we, we kind of touched on a little bit before. The, the biggest one is, is to outwork um, the, the guys across from you. I, I, ask, uh, I ask our guys to do uh, two things uh, when we play and even in practice. Um, I challenge to, to do the same thing against their own teammates, but to, to play harder than the other team. Uh, and, and to, uh, to, to, to do that for their teammates and to have fun while doing it. Um, and fortunately, fortunately the, the community, the school, the parents, the administration, um, they, they believe that as well. Uh, so, you know, now that that's become an expectation, um, you, you know, you, you have a lot of places or a lot of people that are involved in that. We have to put in extra time. Uh, we have to be, uh, putting in that time from a workout standpoint in the off season. So for instance, my, my family, my wife, um, <clears throat> my two kids in, in the off season, I'm taking a little bit extra time uh, to work with our guys and, and they support that. They understand what we're doing, what the, the goal is. Um, you have to have a good coaching staff. You have to have a JV program that teaches uh, the same types of principles, uh, which I do coach, uh, coach speech and coach Baxter do a great job of that. Uh, my assistant coach, Jerry Jordan, it, we're, it, it's, it, you have to find the right guys who believe in what you believe in, in my opinion, to, to be successful. Um, the administration, very, very uh, hands off. Uh, if I ask for some advice from my athletic director on, on particular uh, situations, he'll be glad to give it, but he's not hovering over me, uh, making sure uh, 
um, you know, I'm doing it this way or doing it that way. It's my, it's, it's, I'm the leader of this program, fortunately. Um, and as long as I stay within the rules that are, that are given to us, then, then that's fine. And the principles the same way. Um, but then, you know, even the parents of the players, uh, they have to be willing to allow me to push their, 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 their sons uh, to somewhere where maybe they can't push them um, and, and trust that I'm the way that I'm doing it uh, is going to be the right way. Uh, and, and then you have to have the players to buy in uh, as well. If those players aren't willing to sacrifice for, for each other, then it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, I honestly think one of the best things that we have here at the school is a lot of our players are lifelong friends of one another. They, they've been together since kindergarten. Um, and I think that really plays into why our kids are willing to sacrifice for each other because it's their best friend that, that they're doing it for. Don't you think you developed that culture since you've been there and, the reputation is your teams are always going to play hard. So players coming up through the system, whether it's middle school to the JV program, once they get to the varsity level, they're saying, okay, this is what we expect. This is the tradition, the foundation that you built at Charlotte Catholic. And it's easy for them to buy into it. It, it is. Um, and, and I think, you know, we have a, a young kids camp that we do in the summertime. I got my fingers crossed. We're going to be able to do one this summer. Um, because I think that's a huge, uh, huge thing. I'll have my current players. They're going to work the camp. Uh, and they, so, and I remind those former players, Hey, these little guys, these little third, fourth graders that, that are at this camp that you're going to be working with, you might as well be Steph Curry to them. You, they come watch you play and they just can't believe that they're this close to you. Um, and, and what it says to that little, third or fourth grader is, man, I can't wait to be in that gym and be able to do those same kinds of things. Um, and I think that just builds uh, some excitement, um, <clears throat> some anticipation that uh, these younger guys, as they move forward, I can't wait to be there and then there. And then, and then when they finally are, it is, it's just a huge uh, accomplishment and a, and, and a boost for them that they're willing to do whatever they need to do. And I'm fortunate they, they have, I've had a great, great group of people come through here um, that that are uh, that have all been willing to do that. I could go all the way down to since 2003 as the assistant, but it's a, a very fortunate to have people who are, are willing to work that hard. Now, last season, coach, you were 24 and four. You lose some key seniors, but you do return um, Colin Thomas. Talk about some of the other key returning guys and your goals and expectations for this upcoming season. Well, we've got, uh, we've got, I got four guys who are going to now be in their third year on the varsity team. Um, I got Colin, who's one, and then uh, Kevin Dumser is another, uh, Kevin McCardle, uh, another, and then Kyle Hanchard. Uh, those guys are going to be in their third year uh, on the varsity team. Um, so we're going to lean on their experience. We're going to lean on their uh, knowledge of what we're, we're about um, to, to try to teach these other guys. Uh, I do have eight guys back. Uh, I feel like um, in years past, uh, we, we've been very good for six years or so now, um, and I feel like we have a very good program. So it, it's just who's, who's the next guy? Who, who, who's coming from the JV team that's going to come in and do this? Um, who's going to be the, the junior that may, not got, may, may have not gotten a ton of time before but is now going to get a lot more? Um, have to play a little bit different. Don't have a bunch of size, but we're we're gonna we're gonna compete. Um, we're gonna we're gonna play smart. We're gonna play together, uh, just like like all the other teams have. I, I feel like um, I feel very good about the core group that's gonna be back um, with with our guys uh, in an attempt to win our another conference championship. If we, if we can, we've been very fortunate to. To, to be there all three years that we've been in this league. So we'll, we'll see if we can't keep that streak going. Coach, you played at the high school and the collegiate level. You have an idea what players are going through today. Um, is there any more pressure on players today that you're coaching than what it was when you played as a player? I, I feel like the, the pressure 
I say this to even to my classes that the pressure nowadays is, is just, it's to me, I think it's so much more. Um, <clears throat> the, and I think that's driven, I don't have any data on any of this, but uh, on by social media, uh, you, you can, you can compare yourself to someone in Ohio. You can be comparing yourself to somebody in a, a whole nother state you've never even seen. Um, and I, I just think that that makes it very, very difficult to try and kind of, uh, so keep up with the agenda, so to speak, that these kids, they see the comparisons of, oh, man, he did this, he did that. I, I have to score this much tonight. Um, and, and it's just really hard on them uh, to keep up with what everybody else is doing um, instead of just focusing on, on are they doing uh, – are they trying to become better today than they were yesterday? Uh, that, that's really a lot about what we talk about. Don't worry about what those other guys are doing. What we're doing is good. We just have to do it really, really, really well and really, really hard. Um, but yeah, gosh, they, you know, you can, you can get down to the, by the time I get to the locker room, kids are probably already shot out their stats on Instagram or, or who, or wherever. Um, and, and that pressure just builds and builds and builds and builds and, and, uh, you know, you, you get it from me as a coach. I need you to perform better. And mom and dad probably want you to perform better. And you, there's just a lot there. And it's tough for, for kids nowadays. Well, Coach, um, now I know why I had um, three other coaches. So, Rick, you got to interview Coach <laughs> King. Um, I love your passion. Um, I can tell when you played, just uh, listening to you, you, you played hard. You had that extra motor and – the one thing that your teams have developed over the years is the reputation that your teams are always going to play hard and they're going to compete. And um, that competitive nature led you guys to a state championship in 2016 because when you really think about a lot of the state championship teams is you didn't have a roster that had a lot of D1 guys or, you know, D2s. You may have had a few guys that went to play at a um, D3, you had a lot of guys that probably just played high school basketball, but you played as a team and you won a state championship. And that speaks volume on you as a coach and as a person. Well, I, I, I appreciate that, Rick. It's, um, it's, a, it's a very humbling experience to be a, a high school coach um, because you, you see these, you know, again, I'm looking at these guys behind me. And most of them are graduating because they were seniors that year. Um, but they still, they still reach out to me. Coach, how's everybody doing? Coach, how are your kids doing? Um, and, and at that time, you don't really – you're not grasping. You're just trying to win games. You're just, oh, wow, here we are. And when you look back at it, um, it's, it's just very humbling that those guys still, still reach out, still touch base with us, um, still ask about us. I mean, you mentioned those – they – I had uh, B.J. Mack, who's on a division playing, uh, who just uh, is going to Wofford. And then one other player who uh, graduated from Queens this, uh, uh, just this past, I guess, this past month. And those were the only two college players that we had on that team. Um, so it, it's refreshing and it's humbling. It's refreshing to know that you can still play together. You can still pass the ball. Uh, you can still play team defense. You don't have to have the mega star. Right. Um, to, to do it um, because that's, that's how, that's how I was taught. That's how going all to bring this uh, back around. That, that's how coach Payne taught the game is you, you move the basketball and you played defense. And if that guy was open, you passed it to him. And if he made the shot, great. Um, if he didn't, then you get your rear end back down the court and play, play, play better defense. Um, that's the important thing is coach, you're making an impact on the lives of the players that you're coaching. And um we want to say thank you from Phenon Hoop Report for coming on Coach's Corner today. We've enjoyed um, getting to know your background, your story, and it's a, it's a great story. And um, we just say, want to say thank you again. Well, Rick, thank you for, uh, thank you for doing all of this. I, like I said at the beginning, it's, it's fantastic to, to, to listen to everybody's story because they're all a little unique and you start to understand a little bit more about those coaches and, and how their programs are successful uh, like they are. Uh, but uh, you mentioned that I'm, I'm helping these young men. Um, it's it's kind of scary, though. You, you, we learn, as coaches, we learn a lot from these young men, too. Um, and I always tell them, I, I hope I have taught them um, as much as they have taught me. 
because every team you learn a little bit something else about yourself uh, and how to how to go about your business. At least I do. Um, so I'm very fortunate, and I hope these young men feel the the same way uh, about me. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Rick.